I found this button online in one of the designs on Dribble and wanted to create it in Flutter. I was pretty sad when I was unable to find a solution on Stack Overflow or YouTube and the fact that I wouldn't be able to copy and paste it off the internet. So in this video, we will see how to create this button in Flutter with all the best practices. For creative designs like these, Flutter's native button styling isn't enough and we usually turn to other widgets to handle the shapes or drop shadows. But one thing to always keep in mind is to utilize Flutter's native button button classes and build on top of that. This ensures that the custom button will inherit all the native gestures on all the platforms that Flutter supports. To begin, open up a Flutter project in your favorite editor and go to main.dart. Edit the home parameter with a widget called amazing button. Now create a new file called amazing underscore button dot dart. Type STL and then hit enter on the first suggestion to create a stateless widget quickly and then name it amazing button. Go ahead and import the class in main dot dart. Hot restart will render the placeholder widget on the screen. Now go ahead and replace it with a scaffold. Give the body parameter a column and then a row as its child and then create an elevated button inside it with text as child that says get started. At this point you should see that the button has been rendered but it's not centered. So set the main axis alignment of row and column to main axis alignment dot center. Let's style the button. We will give it the shape of rounded rectangle border with a circular border radius of 5. To give the button an outline we can use the border side class and give it a color property. At this point the button should look like this. To give elevated button a box shadow, we need to wrap it with the decorated box widget with the decoration property that can be assigned to the box decoration class. Let's use the color parameter to see how it looks around the elevated button. Notice how there is a padding in between the two widgets. This comes from the elevated button and we can get rid of it by applying material tab target size dot shrink wrap to the tab target size parameter. Now that we have removed the padding, let's clean up the edges of the decorated box by giving it the same border radius as the elevated button. Finally, implement the box shadow by giving it an offset of 3 and 4 on the x and y axis and the color black. Remove the color above because we just need the box shadow. We're nearly there and we just need to make some changes to get the button to the final design. Go ahead and give the elevated button an elevation of 0 so that it doesn't feel like the button is stacked on top of the box shadow. In order to make the button configurable, we will declare a button color in the class. We will assign this to the box shadow color the border side color and to be consistent let's assign this to the foreground color as well which will change the text color of the button. You can now play around with different colors and see the button change its color on hot reload. I will upload this to my github for reference and you can check it out using the link in the description. I can now sleep peacefully knowing that you have learned something new. That's it for this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one.